turn with me in your Bibles today to sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to read verses six through, I'm sorry, verses 10 through 20, and then I'll lift up the verse for today. Let us stand for the reading of the word while we're standing. Let me acknowledge Sister Eva Murray. Amen. Southern California Conference YPD Director. God bless you, Sister Murray. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Starting at verse 10. When you found it, shout, I got it. Ah, that's not enough of y'all. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let me give you a second to pull it up on your phones. We want to be Bible readers, amen, to make sure we are not being deceived. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. When you found it, shout, I got it. All right. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints and also for me that words may be given to me in the opening of my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak amen is that a good text you may rest on your. You may rest, and take your seats. Um, today we will lift up verses seventeen and eighteen. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Amen. Pray with me today for this final sermon in this series, The Believer's Battlefield, for this sermonic topic, The Final Defense. The Final Defense. Let us pray. God, we thank you and praise you because um, you have blessed us and allowed us to experience your presence once again. Uh, we do not take that for granted, God that your presence is here with us while we worship you because you deserve our adoration and praise and our hope and prayer, God, is that you are pleased with our sacrifice of worship today thus far. Um, God, I pray that you will speak through the words that you have given me to share with your people. I pray, God, that it would be ingrained in our hearts because you have equipped us with spiritual armor that we may be able to stand firm. So God, please stand up in me that when I open up my mouth to speak, you speak through me. That even though your people may hear Barry's voice, that they actually hear your voice. And may you be glorified in this place, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. The final defense, the final defense. So um, I consider myself kind of 
um, a hip hop head, amen. Um, but my hip hop head stopped around the mid 90s, amen. Um, because I really don't really feel hip hop from like 97 to the present day. I mean, there's stuff here and there, but when I talk about hip hop, I talk about like the the mid to late 80s and early 90s. And um, in 1991, there was this album called We Can't Be Stopped. Um, and this album was released by the Ghetto Boys. And there was this song on there called Your Mind Is Playing Tricks On Me. Y'all heard the song? Amen. Y'all heard? Okay. <laughs> Um, this, this song uh, received um, by Rolling Stones magazine in 2012, it was ranked as the fifth greatest hip hop song of all time. And describe in its lyrics the mental anguish and exhaustion of street life, including dealing with symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, paranoia, suicidal ideation, and loneliness. And the title was inspired by, I believe it was Scarface, one of the members when his grandmother was mumbling and was asked, Mama, what you talking about? And she replied back, oh, baby, don't, don't worry about me. My mind is just playing tricks on me. Amen. And, and, and this was the reply that fueled the narrative of this classic hip hop track. So, um, um, s s sister, sister Cheryl, when you go look it up to get the lyrics, look up the clean version. Amen. Look up, look up, look up the clean version because one of the verses says, um, "Day by day, it's more impossible to cope. I feel like I'm the one that's doing dope. Can't keep a steady hand because I'm nervous." Every Sunday morning, I'm in service, praying for forgiveness and trying to find an exit out the business. I know the Lord is looking at me, but yet it still is hard for me to feel happy. I often drift when I drive, having fatal thoughts of suicide, banging get it over with. And then I'm worry free, but that's nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. And then it goes, it goes on to say, it goes on to say that my mind is playing tricks on me. Amen. Now, now, now I'm not suggesting that this song fuels our faith, but it definitely speaks to the despair of many who scrape and battle and fight just to make ends meet to get through another day. We can relate to the difficulty and struggle of living a life pleasing to God's will in a world that has chosen the wide roads in their life. We, it, it speaks to us as we struggle and fight, understanding that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Though it would be easier because it is easier to fight someone we can see. But that's not this fight. Our fight is against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers of darkness. Our fight is against spiritual evil and spiritual forces in the heavens. That's why this fight is so hard, because when you're in a fight with someone you can't see, it feels as if sometimes your mind is playing tricks on you. This fight on this journey of faith is spiritual warfare, and I have found it to be filled personally with mental and spiritual anguish. Exhaustion from living or trying to live up to the standard God has set for me when my flesh is constantly 
pulling me down to my Simon life as I deal with what the world, what, what I would call post-traumatic salvation disorder, sometimes causing paranoia and loneliness. Come on, come on with me. Your mind plays tricks on you when when you base your fight against what you see versus what you can't see against what you feel versus what the holy spirit inside of you is telling you your your mind plays tricks on you when you want to put hands on somebody versus adding that matter to your prayer list when when you want to follow what the world says is right versus what god says is right paul that's when your mind plays tricks on you michael and and, and paul wrestles with this many times on his journey recall his words in Romans chapter 7 for we know that the law is spiritual but I am of the flesh sold as a slave under sin for I do not understand what I'm doing because I do not practice what I want to do but I do what I hate for I know that nothing good lives in me that is my flesh. For the desire that I do what is good is in me, but there's no ability to do it. For I do not the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil that I do not want to do. This is a clear expression of mind delusions. Tricks from the enemy to disorient and, and to push us deeper in despair, causing us to doubt our position on truth and righteousness. Because when we are in despair, we wonder sometimes if we have nailed our position on the right foundation. And we wonder if our shield of faith has been saturated in God's mercy and able to extinguish the fiery darts Satan is cost casting in our direction. We wonder because we can't see this engagement in battle. That's why we have to have these last three pieces of armor in the believer's plan that will push us to stay the course. We we need them all. We need them all. Can we do a quick review? Can we what what do we have the belt of what? Come on now. Come on. Come on. I've been preaching this so that we'll remember it. We have the belt of what? The belt of truth that is grounded in the God's word and in God's truth and we have the breastplate of what? of righteousness that we can walk in the sanctifying righteousness of God that will change us into the image of Christ. And we have sandals on our feet that are nailed in position that we can stand firm. Hallelujah. And we have what? A shield of what? A shield of faith that we can extinguish all of the fiery darts of the enemy. And here is where the fight intensifies. Because your mind now begins to play tricks on you. You're, you're grounded in the truth of God's word. And you wear the belt, um, you wear it as a belt around your waist, living according to the righteousness as a breastplate covering your heart. Your feet are firmly planted to the ground, ready for spiritual warfare. You are armed with your shield of faith, fighting in the shade, amen. But the, but the, but the fiery darts don't stop. Because of the constant onslaught that you are experiencing, your mind starts wondering and playing tricks on you the, the, that the world is going in one direction Lord but you have me planted here the, the world says yes to this that goes against your word and you have me planted here and I am weary I am tired and I need relief that's why I need the final defense
And I'm not going uh, to lie, spiritual warfare is grueling, Greg. Not only are you carrying the weight of the armor, but then the arrows don't stop. Uh, they, they, they keep coming at me. They, they keep casting lies. They, 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 they keep misrepresenting me. I, every time I think they stop, I look up and more arrows are coming. It, it, it never stops and it's, it's grueling and it's causing um, fatigue in my body. It's causing fatigue in my mind. I, I mean, I go to work and my boss is on me and I come home and my children ain't acting right. And then I got another bill in the mail. And then I go back to work and I get written up. And then I come back home and I get in a car accident. It never stops. And it's making me tired. And I'm fighting for the joy and peace that God has given me. And I'm weary of waiting for relief. And if I'm not careful, my mind, my mind will play tricks on me and I, I will slip into despair that then clouds my view and leave me doubting if this darkness will ever cease. It, it, it'll cause me to doubt God where are you? Are you ever going to come and relieve me from this onslaught? Paul, Paul is so familiar with this and he writes with, about it all the time. In 2 Corinthians, he says, I don't want you to become unaware, brothers and sisters, our afflictions of our afflictions that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength so that we even despaired life itself. He sounds suicidal. Indeed, we felt that we had received a sentence of death so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a terrible death, and he will deliver us not he might he will deliver us and we have put our hope in him that he will deliver us again and you gotta talk this thing through and in doing so you arm yourself with the final defense and that next piece of armor protects your mind. That's your first point. You got to protect your mind. One of the, this is one of the final pieces of armor that will fortify us against the relentless arrows of doubt, despair, temptation, fear, and everything else the enemy continuously hurls at us. So I receive my next piece of armor the helmet of salvation. Because Satan wants to inflict a vital blow of spiritual trauma. Because spiritual trauma will mess with our minds and our ability to mentally hold on to God's word and will continue to believe the lies that are hurled by the world by the fiery arrows. Satan's prime target of attack is the control center of your mind. He wants you to believe that the word of God doesn't speak to this day and age. He wants you to believe that the word of God is outdated and doesn't relate. It doesn't deal with the issues that are going on today. And that's why the arrows never stop. And that's why your mind needs to be protected. We protect our minds by receiving the helmet of salvation. I know the word says take, but the transliteration says receive. 
because you can't take salvation. Amen. It ain't yours to take, <laughs> but you receive salvation. You receive it by the sacrificial death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I wear it like a hat. Now, you can have it tilted to the side. You can have it pulled down on your eyebrows. That now, I don't care how you wear it. You can have it backwards, windy. You can wear it however. You can wear it like a brim. You can wear it like a bucket hat. I don't care how you wear it, but just wear the helmet of salvation. It says, I'm saved. I'm saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. I may not be what I should be, but I'm glad I ain't what I ought to, what I used to be. I, I am saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I believe that Jesus Christ rescued me from the pit of hell. And I believe that he will rescue me from every trial that I go through. We, we wear it. And it was worn by Roman soldiers. And it was made of bronze and had protective cheek pieces like a, like a baseball helmet that covered your ears and your cheekbone. And the inside lining of it was like a sponge that, that made the blows bearable. That means you're going to get hit on the head sometimes. But thank God, brother, I got a shield on my head that I got a helmet on the head that would absorb the blows. And that's the function of it. The function of the helmet is that it may absorb the blows, Danelle, that will get to my head. That, that it absorbs the, the, the twisting of the text, the, the, it, it, that, that it absorbs the intellectualism of those with great minds and degrees and good literary skills, that it would absorb me being seduced by the language of the world because I got my Bible that, that tells me what is and what ain't. We must protect our minds. Isaiah says, you keep him in perfect peace. If my mind is stayed on him. Paul says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. He also says, don't be conformed to the world, but be, re be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. Salvation means to be rescued from peril. Amen. And so Dr. William Curtis says the helmet or protection suggests to all of us that we have an anchored hope in our relationship with Jesus that is most powerful when we are under attack. So because my hope is in him, his helmet protects me from all the harm that may come to me in the world. I, I was talking to a member, member about two or three weeks ago about a situation that this member was going through and, 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 it, was, and it was just like a, a lot, it was a lot and I asked the member, I said, how are you? And the member replied, I'm just glad I know Jesus. And, and, and when the member said that, I said, they put the helmet of salvation on. That they are not going to let the onslaught and the problems and this happening and then that happening. They are not going to let it affect their mind. And they said, I'm glad I know Jesus. Because Jesus is the ultimate victory that we are all hoping to achieve in him. Amen. So, so you got you to put that helmet on yes. got to put that helmet on and then the next thing you have to do is you have to wield your weapon amen amen you got to wield your weapon one thing I know is when my mind plays tricks on me and I 
and I receive my helmet of salvation and get my mind right, I'm, I'm clear. I'm clear that the fight is getting close. Amen. And the, the, the onslaught of warfare is getting to me, Brenda, when, when my mind starts to mess with me. I, I know the fight is getting close. Amen. And, and I don't know if you guys know a lot about fighting. I know this row does. I know, I know that third row does. <laughs> I know they know a lot about fighting, uh, but I'm not sure if all of y'all know a lot about fighting, but, but you know, when, when you're fighting and, and, and Greg, you know, them wild swinging dudes, I mean, those are easy people to fight. You just, you can see them punches coming a mile away. You can, you can move out of the way. You can, you can redirect the, the blow and all that. But, but, but when the fight is at its fiercest, Brother Jennings, is when it's close up. Amen. It's, it's, it's when it's close up. You remember Mike Tyson, how he always used to get in there and get close because everybody can't fight close. Amen. Everybody can't fight close. And so when, when my mind plays tricks on me and I put on the helmet of salvation, I know the fight is getting close. I know Satan is bringing it close. And Paul instructs us that when the fight gets close, it's time to wield your weapon. Amen. It's time to pull out the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And to fully understand, Paul's not talking about some house of dragon sword, one of those long five foot swords. That's, that's not the, the kind of sword. The, the sword Paul was referring to was like a dagger. It was, it was a, a, a short knife. It was, it was short and it was sharp. Amen. And, and, and anybody who knew how to be surgical with the dagger can put in a, a fatal blow on the enemy. And so Paul says when the fight gets close, it's time to wield your weapon. Amen. You say, what's that word wield means? Wield means to hold it and to use it. Amen. Amen. Paul, Paul is saying that God doesn't expect you to just be out there taking blows. Amen. That, that he doesn't expect you just to be out there taking one to the dome and taking one to the body and just keep. No, no. Paul is saying God says when the fight gets close that you fight back. But God says we don't fight like the world fights. We fight with the word of God. So take out your weapon and use it. Don't just take it out. Don't just show it to them. No, you got to use it. And how do you use it? That you got to tell the devil what the devil doesn't want to hear. That every lie that the devil tells you, you speak scripture back to them. Look at Jesus tempted in the wilderness. The devil said, if you are the son of God, come man the stones to become loaves of bread and what did Jesus said man doesn't live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God he didn't let it be known that he was the word in the flesh he wasn't good enough for him to say I am the word devil run no he had to use the word and then when the devil said on another temptation he said again it is written you shall not put the Lord God to the test he spoke scripture back to the devil and then when the devil said go to the mountain and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world Jesus said be gone Satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and in him only shall you serve now I got a question for you Lord if Jesus had to wield his weapon and use scripture back against the devil why do we think we can defeat the devil by other means why do I think I can defeat the devil by my connections why do I think I can defeat the devil by my education why do I think I can defeat the devil because I think I look cute you better get your Bible out and get that Bible in your word and wield the word back on the enemy. 
wield it. Find out the scriptures that line up to your weaknesses. God forgive us for us believing that there ain't nothing wrong with us. God forgive us for thinking that we are perfect in your sight. God forgive us for us thinking that we ain't got nothing in us that you are displeased with. But I got to find the word that speaks to my temptations. That whenever I become tempted, I speak to the devil in the high and heavenly places and say whatever it is. I got to say, I ain't going to tell you mine and you don't tell me yours. But get it in your heart so that when the devil strikes, you can speak it back to him. It could be greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It could be I can do all things through Christ. That gives me strength. It could be knowing all things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It could be be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wield your weapon. And then the final line of defense is push your prayers. Amen. 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 Push, push your prayers. Prayer is part of the armor. Prayer is part of the armor because prayer is what moves you through the battle. The prayer is what gives me the spiritual fortitude to be nailed in place regardless of what comes at me. Prayer is what seals what I am wielding in my mind. Amen. Prayer is what cements it in my heart so that I don't become weary and wishy-washy, amen. Aren't you tired of wishy-washy Christians that'll quote scripture to you, but whenever it happens to them, they fall apart, amen. I want, I, I want it to be cemented in my heart. And so I, I pray through it, I pray through it, I pray through it. But, but note, note the language of the text. The text says praying in all times in the spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for the saints. Don't miss that. Making supplication for the saints. In other words, pray for the body of Christ. Be because, because, that person you are in ministry with may have a loose belt on. May, may have a loose belt on. And, and because of my love for that person, um, their weakness may affect me. Amen. Amen. Because they may be my weak spot. Okay, well, let me give it, okay, so I love my wife, okay, and, and so um, this, is just a, this is just an illustration, this, this ain't nothing, I'm just making this up as I go. I, I, I love my wife, and so my supplication for her is that she has her, her armor on tight, okay, because if she doesn't, and one of y'all go for her, and she responds, that hits me in a weak spot. And then I go take off my belt, amen, and go stand because of the weak spot that I have for her, amen. Are y'all with me? 
Amen. So, so, so you pray that your children got their armor on so you don't have to step in and be big mama when somebody comes at them. You, you pray, stewards, that your other stewards got they built on so that they don't slip so you ain't got to come for them that come for them. So the word says that we pray in supplication for all the saints because we're all in battle together. Hallelujah. Now I'm trying to end, so y'all got to help me out. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand in the evil day. Stand therefore with the belt of truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, with the shoes grounded in the gospel of peace, with the shield of faith that extinguishes all of the fiery darts. Don't forget the helmet of salvation because your mind will play tricks on you. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is the final defense. You have received from heaven a package of armor that you are directed to clothe yourself with every day because we do not fight against flesh and blood but our fight is against rulers evil darkness in heavenly places 